Welcome to Branson Spotlight with our friend Doug Gabriel from here in Branson. And good to see you, sir. Good to see you. Thank you for having me on your wonderful program. Well, thank you. <laughs> We're trying to uh, highlight different artists in Branson, especially those that have been here for a long time. Uh, Appreciate let that. the public get to know them a little bit and find out your background, future plans, that sort of thing. And yeah. you've been in Branson for quite a while. I've been in Branson 29 years. I started in 1985 on a mm -hmm. show called The Starlight Theater with people like Shoji to Bucci and everybody, uh, uh, John Paul Cody, uh, the Texans were all on that show at that time. And, uh, and then I started my own show in 1994 at the Jim Stafford Theater. You've and been, I've been doing going your own show since 20 years. 20, <laughs> 20 years I've been doing my own show. So. Do you like doing your own? Well, obviously you must like doing your own show, but I love it. And my whole family now has become a part of my show. And plus, I have a wonderful uh, band of wonderful musicians on top of the family being in the show. And just last year, now after I've been entertaining in Branson 29 years, but just last year I finally got my own theater. Really. Yeah. Well, I get asked all the time, because I perform at the showboat, and I get asked, uh, have you ever thought of doing your own show? And I say, no, thank you. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot of work. People around here don't realize how much oh. work it is, because you not only do the entertainment side, but you have to do the business side. And Running a the theater is really quite something, and, and it's that you're correct when you say that. People, a lot of people don't realize just how hard it is to maintain a theater, and you know you're, you have to do the concessions. And, yeah. and, you know, there's just a a lot more things to it and then of course we have other shows in our theater as well so we we try to help a, a lot of different people and and it's wonderful having our own place we've had a wonderful time the theater used to be Yakov's years ago oh really and uh, it's beautiful right behind the Olive Garden right yeah I know right where that is my kids always see the signs <laughs> yeah I want to go down there they're big fans of the Olive Garden <laughs> oh yeah I love having that in my parking lot <laughs> yeah it's a place to go for lunch yeah so it's it's wonderful and it's a good landmark where people can find find our theater they just go down the hill right right by the olive garden but the theater itself is just gorgeous on the inside oh i love it cuz i yeah. saw the uh the uh, play or the musical that was there the frankie oh. valley or um what was the name of that? I oh, can't remember. Right I know now. which one you're talking about. It was, it's been a few years, but yeah. uh, I used to go down there. Breaking up is hard to do. Is there that the go. one? That's yeah. It. yeah. But I used to go and watch that. I had a lot of friends in there, and that is a great place to be. It is. It's um, a wonderful theater. Uh, we put a lot into it when we moved in there. Uh, there's uh, all new lighting, mm -hmm. new sound, and then also uh, you know the carpet is all brand new. So it's just gorgeous in there. They had a, kind of a funny thing that happened because back then Celebration City was open. Oh. And... Uh, right behind you there and they would do the fireworks every night well that was right in the middle of their show and, <laughs> and whenever I would see it over time they worked it into the show because you could hear it you know, oh, you're, so you're hearing the and so they would say oh look at the fireworks or something <laughs> oh that's good <great. laughs> yeah. well you don't have to worry about that now no no I, it's it's okay now but and I actually do uh, Christopher mornings and nights a lot oh, of people do. wonder I still do mornings because I, I was a morning show for years but I also do nights now in fact we we probably do more evenings than we do mornings, but uh, we do over, I'm going to say, over 200 shows a year. Wow. At what time is the morning show? 10 a.m. and then 8 at night. Is that a challenge, uh, getting the people? Because you probably get a lot of coaches. Right. That's I that's why we still do our mornings, because I've always had a strong coach following. Mm -hmm. And uh, we and reason being is we, we change our show yearly, so we've had loyal customers that stay with us year after year. Right, right. But is it a challenge with them in the morning? Because I know uh, we do a late <laughs> night show. Uh, our show, our crew starts at eight. The show itself doesn't start till around nine fifteen. And I see people out there kind of tired. You know, <laughs> believe it or not, I get them fresh in the morning. They're ready to go. Oh, they're ready to go. Yeah, well, they get them at like six a.m. They do instead. these buses and they follow them in there. And you know, no, I haven't. A notice really that much of a difference. Now your summer crowd in Branson's different right. than the spring and fall, mm -hmm. and so you adapt your show accordingly and stuff. And we're actually getting into the music of you know we do everything from Marty Robbins to the Bee Gees to Kenny Loggins. I mean we do Elvis. all stuff. Yeah, right? I do Elvis. Yeah. yeah, I do Elvis and Tom Jones and a lot mm -hmm. of different people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I saw your show years ago when you were at the Stafford Theater. Oh, I wow. think that's where it was. And uh, I remember, I remember you uh, talking about. 
about your, your Elvis bu- bu- belt buckle. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I was given this belt. I still wear that belt to this day. In fact, the lady that brought me to the town gave me it. And it's a, the designer of that belt was a famous designer by the name of Nudie, which mm-hmm. Nudie made some of Elvis's stuff. So this belt is it's quite valuable. And uh, I'm really honored that she gave it to me. So I wear it still in my show. It's sort yeah. of an image thing with us. Do you remember? Uh, is she from Vegas? Do you remember? Uh, boy, uh, no, I'm trying to think. Well, she she was from Grapevine, Texas, actually. Okay, all right. Yeah, she had a show there called the Grapevine Opry, and I was on her show years ago when I was just a little kid. And then when I came to Branson, I saw that she had her own theater at uh-huh. that time, and so uh, I ended up getting the job there. I used to do a, a bit in my show where um, it was a tribute to Elvis, but doing magic and comedy, and I would dress as Elvis in the show and and kind of a little tribute to him, not making fun of him or anything, but uh, doing magic as yeah. Elvis. And uh, I was trying, I tried for years to get the outfit made. It never looked right. <laughs> the jumpsuit is yeah. what I would use. And so finally this woman on the internet gets a hold of me because I had posted all over the place. And she said, I can make you one. And I said, I need it to look authentic. And she goes, well, it will because I designed his jumpsuits. Oh, wow. <laughs> and she sent me pictures of her with Elvis and show me wow. that she actually, so she made my prop. And That's awesome. That, that, it was pretty neat. So I got that little connection to Elvis myself. Well, he's always been my favorite singer but um, you know my show has so much evolved since years ago because now my whole family's in it. My son who's 23 years old he was just put in the top five comedians in Branson. He is hilarious. He's oh. like a Jim Carrey oh, is really? what he's like I'll have to on see my him. show. He's very funny, very physical. His comedy's different than uh-huh. what you're going to see in Branson. Right, he's right. real visual. People mm-hmm. watch him. And they like that in Branson. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's very animated and that kind of thing. And then uh, our my wife does anywhere... Uh, uh, she does Shania Twain, Little Big Town. My daughter does Taylor Swift style. So we've really evolved the show. And my son, who drums for us, won Drum of the Year three years in a row. He's an yeah. amazing drummer. He's 27. He's the oldest. Right. right. And uh, him and his wife, uh, we're going to be grandparents uh, coming oh. up. Yeah, we're pretty excited. When uh, is that? Uh, January 5th is when oh, we're, we're, well, we're... That's not too long from, from I know. now. We're yeah. very, very excited about that. And that'll be our first grandbaby. And, uh, uh-huh. of course, the baby will probably be in the show. I was going to say, what, what, what character, what uh, artist are they going to yeah, right. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, we'll definitely show the... We're just a family show, but we do it. Uh, um, I have some of the best musicians in town, uh, Dino Strunk on the guitar, uh, JT Lynn on piano, Scott Lancaster on bass, and of course my son drums and uh, so it's it's a big variety show, mm-hmm. and uh, with, mm-hmm. we try to do a little bit of everything and cover all age groups. I like that you do the Taylor Swift yeah. and all that, uh, the yeah. shake it up and all that sort people, of stuff. So people people love right love that. I mean, uh, the, particularly you know the young uh-huh. kids that come uh-huh. to town. Oh yeah, uh, my uh, I have twins. Uh, you do? Yeah, I do. Uh-huh. And we talk about them a lot on here, and uh, they love to sing. Well, my daughter loves to sing, and I say the two of them are my personality. She is very outgoing and funny and loud. And that's me on stage. <laughs> and my son is very reserved and just sits there, but then will do something that you won't expect. And, right. Um, right. They're very tiny, but she uh, shocked us one day. We were in the car, and they always just listen to the radio, and we can hear them. And one day, she just sang the entire Taylor Swift song, oh. even the rap part. Oh my! <laughs> about the see, they the listen. And they know. Oh yes, they they can pick up kids are really fast. Yeah. So yeah. we did a funny little thing. <laughs> uh, here, I filmed her and uh, recorded the music, but then did it on a separate track, so we could take it out, and you can just hear her lyrics the whole oh, time, that's and the words great. she thinks they're saying. <laughs> So, uh, so she would go nuts. Now, how old your daughter? Uh, they're almost three. In January, oh. they turn Oh, three. that's so, perfect age. <laughs> but, the, but the two of them, they he uh, stands there with the microphone, and she's the dancer and stuff, and it, it's pretty funny. That's how I started. You know, people ask me, you know, uh, my mom tells me this. Uh, when I was three, mm-hmm. I'd climb up on the coffee table, and I'd use a jump rope for a microphone. And back then, I was mimicking, because my mom would play Tom Jones and Engelbert Humperdinck, and uh-huh. I would be mimicking those records at three years old oh, on, on the coffee table. Yeah, for That's all your little <laughs> friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I started at a very young age. Then I started on a guitar at around age 10. Uh, I do play the only guitar in the world made from a 1969 Thunderbird muffler. I saw that. <laughs> and is that, uh, don't you have one of them in the Ripley's? Yeah, I yeah. do. Mm-hmm. One's in Ripley's. And then uh, the College of the Ozarks recently asked me for uh, another replica of my muffler. They're going to place out at the college. Oh, wow, at their so, museum that they yeah. 
yeah, out there. Ralph Foster Museum. Yeah, right. So I'm pretty. How about in that. the world did you come up with that idea? Well, my dad did actually years ago. I had a band in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. That's where I'm originally from, uh, called the New Relations, and we would have these meetings. You know, basically, you know, every month saying, okay, how how are we going to draw attention to our career? And right. my dad owned a Midas Muffler franchise at that time, uh-huh. and we all at one of our meetings just said, hey, well, let's make a guitar out of a muffler. And then we all laughed it off, and Dad got to thinking about it and went and did it. Oh, really? And did my dad knew nothing about how to make a guitar. My dad's n- not musically inclined mm-hmm. at all. And when he made this first muffler guitar, is by the way, is the one I still play on the show, even the music store said, have you done this before? And he said no. And they said the bridge and everything was perfectly put on there. Right. And so we, we call it a miracle of the Lord because the thing <laughs> works, you know. And it works it, and it you've been using it for and all I've been using years. it for, so it's, a, it's from the 70s. Yeah. And I'm still playing that original one in my so show. So he brings this home after yeah. you guys have kind of joked around about it. And, and, uh, and man, it worked. Or did you have any idea he was making it? Or? No, when he finally... Uh, brought it home and he wanted to test it out see if it'd work and I was a little bit scared to try it because I was worried I was going to get electrocuted or something <laughs> with the metal and stuff and uh, but it ended up working and and just so you know that muffler guitar I, it got me more national publicity than you can imagine oh, I was sure. in over 6,000 newspapers worldwide not mm-hmm. just in the United States worldwide mm-hmm. also uh, people magazine hot rod magazine i was on crick and chase show uh oh uh, yeah because you can uh, cross i mean that's something car related that's music yeah. related it, it, it was it got Brilliant. me so much publicity in my career that was in my early days but i still bring it on the show here in branson and tell the yeah. little story of it so. oh that's awesome <laughs> now i remember when you did it and i thought it was hysterical oh yeah thought, and then when you played it I was like, wait a minute, it actually works. <laughs> it it actually know? works. And this year, and I don't want to give the surprise away too much, but my band all made their own car part instruments. That's so awesome. we all play it together now. I was going to say, you should have the little grandbaby come out with a little carburetor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. But no, we all play uh, a thing. We all do a little bit of dueling banjos, actually. Uh-huh. And, dueling uh, mufflers? Yeah, dueling muff. Dueling, we call it muff tars. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it, it, it's going really, really well. And uh, my band made their instruments by themselves, and they worked on them for a year. Right. And they surprised me with them. And, and that's going in the show next year? Well, it's in now, and it, it remains because it's such a popular oh, thing. Oh, that's now. awesome. So. And what is your typical season? When do you, when yeah, do you I, come back? Because we're at the end of the year when right. we're recording this, but uh, uh, we're going to play this again in the uh, spring. And so when do you actually start shows? Well, I uh, start in Branson usually in March because I tour all around the United States in January and February. Uh, I'll be in Louisiana, Florida, Michigan. I'm all over. All in the muftar around. Yeah, all in the muftar Must be around. exhausting. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's one of my lines. It's too exhausting <laughs> oh, really? to play. <laughs> but, uh, but then we start back in Branson. And each year uh, we change our show up all the time because we you know we get such good repeat business that i want people to see something fresh new right so i'll i'll usually change about 90 percent of my show mm-hmm. we keep the favorites in i play malaguena which is a spanish song i play on a guitar right uh, i cannot do a show and not sing unchained melody i've just sort of gotten known for it so i sing songs like that mm-hmm. and uh, just we try to keep the favorites in, but then we, we change the rest of it. You have to do that in Branson. I learned that myself uh, because if you change everything, even if you – I had the feeling, oh, people are tired of me doing such and such, and I change everything, then they come back and say, we miss. Oh, yeah, that's you know, exactly Even though they've they, seen it a hundred <laughs> times. They want you know, to see it again. They want to see it again. And uh, one of our producers says people like to be amazed in Branson by the familiar, like they – they like coming back. They come back for a reason. They want to see certain things, unchained melodies that they want to hear. And, right. And so you don't want to change everything, but you do have to keep it interesting. You and do. that's one of the challenges, I think, of brands. And you kind of mentioned it. Our season changes. I haven't talked with, about this with anyone else, but in the summer, for those of you that don't come to Branson, we get a lot of families. That's correct. That come for the amusement parks, the water slides, the go karts, and the zip Everything. lines, and yeah. all that, the shows. <laughs> uh, but then school starts, and suddenly, I'm sure you have the same thing. Overnight, 
the crowd changes. It's a whole different ball game once school starts. It, it really, really is. And you, you, I call it two, almost two different type of seasons and stuff. And that's why there's a fine line of trying to create a show that appeals to all ages, mm -hmm. you know, because you, you don't want to neglect these new people coming to Branson. Maybe they've never been here before. Right, right. And they're wanting their kind of music. Yeah. But then you can't neglect the senior market who's been here for years. Right. So that's what we try to do. We cover the older artists as well as the newer artists. We did like Jason Aldean, Kelly Clarkson this year. Uh, we, we've just tried Tim McGraw. We do a lot of different people. Right. And... Well, being here 29 years, you've seen the changes. I've been here uh, almost 10, and mm -hmm. I've seen the changes. Right. Uh, it's that been really different. When I first came to Branson, I think there was, I'm going to say at best, 20 shows. Mm -hmm. And uh, now there's like, I think the latest count was about 200 shows. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's it's crazy. a lot of people coming here. And uh, the good thing about Branson is we have the diversity of a lot of different types of artists and a different appeal to a lot of people, uh, mm -hmm. different age groups. Because for a while there, to be honest with you, Branson had the reputation of only being for the old time country yeah. artists. And we, we certainly welcome that, but Branson is much more than that. Yes. Especially and, uh, now in the last five years or so, I'd say it's really changed with the addition right. of all the, the extra activities for kids and so on. Right. When, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of the old time country artists and they, they pack them in when they do come to Branson. So people need to take notice of that too. But, but there, we also try to do some of the newer. And so Branson is reaching out to an, uh, another completely different market and uh, there's room for everybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even the newer artists are covering the old time uh, yeah. performers. So yes. it's like all coming back again. And I think it's funny when, uh, I can't think of a specific song right now, but a newer artist will cover an old time country song, let's say. Oh, yeah. And you hear somebody that will go to one of those shows. Oh, I heard so and so doing Taylor Swift's song. No, Taylor <laughs> Swift does. <laughs> that, that's song. right. Like they have it backwards. Like the kids don't understand that some of the songs have been around for a long time. And, right. and it's just a big cycle coming around again. Well, if you get good material, good song material, and that's why my show, the, our tribute is to the great music. Mm -hmm. We do the, when we only perform number one hits that reach the radio, number one on the radio. And so therefore, when people come to our show, everybody knows every single song from the start to right. the finish. And that's, that's what our new theme is. And uh, we uh, just won Best Tribute Show again for the third year from the Branson Show Awards, which we were excited oh, about. Yeah. And uh, so we uh, try to keep it fresh, new, and uh, we're doing some of the newer artists we've done is uh, this year it was like James Taylor, Barry Manilow, mm -hmm. getting into that, you know, the baby boomer. Because mm -hmm. as our, our uh, the demographic that comes here, you have to keep moving it up a little bit there. because the kids, the kids, the uh, people <laughs> now that are coming to Branson, the retired folks, well, they grew up in the 60s and the 70s. Or, you know, there so you, you go. have to keep adjusting it. That's exactly and, right. And, and that's where the smart business people are in this town, that <laughs> know to keep evolving. And that's what makes Branson uh, yeah. so popular, actually, yeah. is that we truly do have something for everyone now. Uh, you want to see um, newer artists, like you're saying, but also we have all the different types of shows. When I first got invited here, my first response 10 years ago was, I don't do country themes. Like I, I thought it was all country music. <laughs> right. Like See, saying. that's the perception is mm -hmm. that a lot. And, the, and you know, we're still our country music, but we're, we're everything. Everything. Too. Yeah. And it comes down to uh, like in your show, good music is good music. Like it doesn't matter when it was written, who performed it. If it's entertaining music, the People crowd's going to like it. That's so. exactly right. And you know, I, you, you know, you're on the show, but which, uh, you know, I have to say, that the Hershans are just first class people all the way and really they have really kept Branson on the cutting edge with Silver Dollar City and just everything that they've done. I have such respect for them and mm -hmm. uh, how they've kept Branson a clean family destination that you know up uplifts God, family, and country. Right. And, and that town this town does that. And uh, so we can appeal uh, you know, a person can bring their kids and the grandparents and right, everyone right. in the family is going to have a good time. That's true. And not, and what you're saying is true. And they, they stay uh, current. They, you know, they added the biggest roller coaster, wooden roller coaster or whatever. Which I'm afraid like, to ride. Did you, you haven't ridden it? <laughs> I haven't ridden it. No, I've done everything else out there. Yeah, but, uh, I got invited to ride it uh, for you the did. Uh, inaugural you know, run, big huh? thing and uh, outlaw run. And I said, no, thank you. I, <laughs> are you afraid? No, I just don't like it. Uh, uh, I, I, no, I have not been on it. My daughter rides it like crazy. Not the three-year-old. I have a right. daughter. Uh, um, 
Well, my and, my son, who's old, you know, he's our oldest. He's twenty seven now, but I always will send him on things to sort of to test scout. it, and he'll and he'll tell me you can handle this or no, you can't handle. It. He came back and says you can't handle it. Yeah, <laughs> he says no it's pretty way. intense. Oh, I just can't so. see it. They had a thing a few years ago. Uh, real quick, that was uh, the nighttime. You could go out in the dark and ride things. Oh. And my daughter had not ridden roller coasters much. She had done the small things. And mm-hmm. I said, let's ride this. And I thought it'd be hilarious to record her. So I turn on the voice <laughs> recorder on the phone. And I thought, this is going to be funny. you know. And I wasn't forcing her to be on it. Uh, right. So it's not like that. And so we ride it. And I record it. The next day, I'm playing it. And she's there. And we're laughing. And somebody said... Boy, listen to you scream, Olivia. Your voice is so high pitched. She said, "That's my dad." <laughs> it oh, scared me so bad. <laughs> oh yeah, see that's she me. didn't care. She <laughs> wrote it again afterwards. I got off. My hair was all crazy in my eyes, and I said, "That's it. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna sit kid. over here." She's like, "Can I go right up by myself?" I'm like, "Go." go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's funny. No, thank you. That's exactly how we are with you know. But I'll try certain things, and maybe one of these years I'll get enough guts to actually go on it. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> do you do any of the uh, other things? in town that become popular like the zip lines or anything like that oh no because i have a i admit they're fun and you know i always recommend them for people that like that kind of thing but because i have a height issue that's my deal oh, yeah i i really really afraid of heights for some reason mm-hmm. yeah I yeah i have a bad so. back so that, that's actually my excuse is i you know i don't want to be back. jostled around and stuff no and, you don't you don't and don't want to do that but we have some good ones here in town this town has everything there really yeah. is everything you yeah. know uh, when i'm out and i tell people uh, on ships or when i'm traveling like you do and i say come to branson oh you know my grandma would like it no 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 you would like it <laughs> yeah you would like it and that is probably the biggest misconception about this town is that it's uh, for retired folks. Because there's, I would say, there's equal amounts for younger kids and our retired friends. And Yeah. Um, there really, really is. And, and that is the, the problem, uh, is the perception. And I know that there's a lot of people have been working on that. And I think it's coming around. I mean, uh, I know that we have more theater seats than most any town. Mm-hmm. And, I forget uh, how many are. the it's chamber over fifty thousand yeah. theater seats, it's and amazing. so and our theaters are state of the art. Right, these theaters are nice theaters. Mm-hmm. I've played a lot of nice venues, and it doesn't get really any better than what's here. Right, and right. so uh, we're I'm proud about that, and people get a quality. And the thing that that makes Branson like for guys like us who have families, we're we're living in the area. It makes it nice because you can live somewhat of a family life. Yeah. and not be gone all the that time. That was the attraction. Uh, yeah, for me here. to come here is that I didn't have to be on the road. And, right. And driving at night in a bus and yeah. and all that. And you get to go home to your family. You can get your family involved in the show. Right. And people don't realize that the numbers are staggering about this town. What do we get? Seven million visitors, they say. Right, and a year. And There's only 10,000 people that live in the town. I that's, know. that's hilarious to me. And yeah. the one that always got me was, uh, I don't know how current this is, but at one point they said there's 15,000 hotel rooms. Yeah. yeah. I That's like a that. separate room for you to s- sleep in every night for 50 years. I know. <laughs> it's, I know. It's, it's, it's insane. It's, and, they're, and they're wonderful people. And the, this town has uh, always been uh, a wonderful town. Like I said, it uplifts God, family, and country, which I think is is made Branson what it is. Mm-hmm. Now, I'm just saying I'm, a, I'm an old timer because I've been here a long time. But I really think that Branson should always try to embrace what made us, brought us to the dance. I totally agree. You know? Occasionally, I'll get people that'll come up at the show and they'll say, "Well, when are you going to have casinos?" And right. I'll say, "Hopefully, never," because uh, then we're just an imitation. Of right. That, that, Vegas, that's where we I, have our thing. Yeah, right, you know? that's the thing. I think that's different. And, and uh, you know, other nations, nations have their thing, and uh, this is what has built Branson. And I think if Branson continues to embrace what we have been. It's just going to get bigger and bigger as the word totally gets out. Totally agree. I totally agree. You know? <laughs> uh, well, let's go back and talk about your show for next year. At your theater, you have um, some other shows that are there right. now and uh, also will be there next year, right? Right. That's correct. Who uh, else do you have at the theater? Well, we have uh, Jim Owen, who wrote the song Louisiana Woman, Mississippi uh-huh. Man for Conway Twitty and Loretta Lynn. Jim's a good friend of mine, a very funny comedian. I mean, just... He nails them uh, with that and, and wrote a lot of great songs, tells a lot of great stories in his show. He does our matinee time slot. Okay. I do mornings and nights. He does 2 o'clock. And then uh, we're having another artist next year by the name of Danny Diamond, mm-hmm. who does a tribute to uh, 
Neil Diamond, Buddy Holly does what things a coincidence! Like that. He has the same last name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you would think. Yeah, but uh, he he's going to be new to the area. And then also we have Barbara Fairchild uh-huh. who does her Sunday morning worship service. She's at She's the nicest theater. woman. I've talked to oh. her. The sweetest person. We 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 love her and Roy and. Uh, and then also we have uh, Jamming for Jesus, which that's a once a month event where we bring in numerous gospel acts from all over the country, and it, and it changes monthly. We do them only once a month, and it's always the first Sunday of every month at two mm-hmm. o'clock, and those will start up in April. But uh, that goes every month, and it's always different, and it's free. Oh, it's absolutely free. free. People can just come. Wow, yeah. it's neat. So. And so you'll have those on your website as to who's performing. Uh, well, Phyllis Road Truck handles the Jamming for Jesus event, but we always try to put a big flyer out and, and it go, uh, put it on Facebook of who who's all going to be there each month. Mm-hmm. And so we do try to keep up on that. But right. uh, And then, like, they take a... Uh, uh, each month we have a different cause that we try to help out through that show. And at one time it was a Salvation Army, and we do uh-huh. others. And, Maybe uh, a, a comedian with twins. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. <laughs> we could have the like, Christopher good, James one. Yeah, a, tri- <laughs> a cause. That's a cause. Trust that's, me. Uh, believe uh, me, I know. Yeah. Because uh, you, having children, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyway, so that it, it helps that. And uh, we just love having it at the theater. We've had some wonderful gospel artists on there, and, and she gets people from all over around the country, mm-hmm. and uh, she handles that because it's quite a lot of booking of people with that. Yeah, that's a lot of work. Yeah, it's yeah, a lot I of work. I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> Again, really that goes hard. back to doing your own show and all that. No, thank you. Yeah, right. Let uh, me show tough. up and punch in punch and do in my and thing do your and thing. go home. Yeah. Uh, but you, uh, Barbara, just to be clear, is not performing at your theater. She's doing a Sunday morning worship service. Worship. That's correct. She still has her own show at the Golden Corral. Mm-hmm. And, and the public's and, welcome to come to that on Sunday morning. Oh, yeah, that's just open to the public and... Uh, yeah, it's so funny because I got to tell you a little funny story about Barbara and her husband, Roy. See, Roy Morris and my wife, Cheryl, they've teased Barbara and I for years that at all the events, they go, well, where are our pictures or where, are, you know, they, uh-huh. so they've decided that it's an inside joke, but they keep uh, saying that they're going to have their own show someday and uh, they're going to, they're going to call themselves the where is it at theater? No one's going to be able to find it. But, but anyway, they tease Barbara and Roy all the time. And uh, this year, Roy sent me over the internet. He made a fake billboard with a big picture of him and my wife. And then he, Barbara Fairchild and I went uh-huh. down here real small. Oh, that's it awesome. was funny. He's that funny. Is. But we have a good time. Oh, that's a great name for a theater. <laughs> Where I always is it at wanted, theater? I always wanted to open a restaurant called I Don't Care. Ah! But, you know, it's or it's up to you. It's up um, to you. I have a friend. Uh, they did a. Uh, they had a little country band, and I used to help with it in Ohio. Kind of book bands and things like that. Never again. It's a lot of work. <laughs> That's real work. And uh, the name of their band was Free Beer. And so up on the <laughs> sign tonight, Free Beer. And so everyone oh, would come in. Oh wow! That back out the place, <laughs> right. and they didn't get it for false false advertisement. No, was that was the name they, of the group. They, so yeah, a restaurant called I Don't Care, and the Nowhere Theater. The and, Nowhere. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. That oh yeah, be, that would be perfect. Oh yeah. Well, uh, shows next year. You're going to be still doing the morning show. You'll be doing the evening show. Lots of stuff going on at your theater there behind the Olive Garden. So go have your breadsticks and your oh yeah, your, they can uh, eat right there and, and come on down for the show and <laughs> be ready to cheer and yell. <laughs> for all the number one hits there, that's the exactly right show. and uh, we'll put the website down below where you can get tickets and more information about doug and the other shows that they have there and thank you for coming thank out to you. talk and thank and you for what you're doing for branson this is really good thank you very much i appreciate that and we'll see you next week on branson spotlight bye bye